Hello and welcome back to A Complete Denture Journey. Once again, this is for New York City College of Technology, Department of Restorative Dentistry, Complete Dentures 1 course. This is video 7 within the instructional video set. It's on the occlusion rim appointment. This is a clinical instructional video. To begin, a point of origin is always a good idea. The evaluation of a current denture can aid in knowing what changes should be made for improvement both aesthetically and functionally. This includes measurements of the pre-existing dentures. The initial evaluation. The initial insertion of an occlusion rim calls for the evaluation of the proper occlusal vertical dimension and occlusal plane. In this case, the initial evaluation results in the patient being overopened due to a premature contact in the posterior, along with excessive height on the mandible. Chair side adjustments are usually necessary during the occlusion rim visit. Although already cut at 45 degree angles, the clinician determines that they need to be cut at a steeper angle. The comparison. If existing occlusal vertical dimension is acceptable with the dentures the patient is wearing, along with the occlusal plane, the original dentures may act as a great guide for the height of the rims. At minimum, it serves as a great point of origin. During the comparison, the drastic height difference from the original lower denture to the occlusion rim results in a height adjustment of the lower mandibular occlusion rim. Once the clinician has made the desired changes, further evaluation is done to ensure proper fit, form, and function. As you can see, the patient is closing into his proper relationship and the occlusion rims are now meeting in a more accurate relationship. To verify this relationship, use a jaw gauge. This facilitates measuring the patient's VDO and replicating their position each visit. Once the occlusal vertical dimension and occlusal plane have been determined, some further adjustments are common, such as the addition or removal of wax in the anterior region for lip support. In this case, it has been determined that the patient has insufficient lip support. By heating a sheet of base plate wax and adding it to the surfaces of an occlusion rim, it is an easy way to add uniform surface area to the rim, whether it be for lip support or even increasing occlusal vertical dimension. It should be noted that consistent evaluation is key. The evaluation should be performed in steps. Seeing the complete picture can be difficult in a single glance. Once the clinician has completed modifying the occlusion rims, they then can mark the midline, canine lines, and high lip line. This information is detrimental to the dental technician. Not only does it aid in proper positioning of teeth, but also the selection of proper size of teeth. The final step of this appointment is achieving a bite registration. If a clinician plans on using a bite registration material, it is good practice to create notches on the occlusal surfaces of the rim. This acts as a matrix for the bite registration material. At this time, if using an aesthetic template, it may be applied to the rim now once all modifications to the occlusion rim are complete. This will further aid in the evaluation process, as seen in the video. The final evaluation. Some main characteristics to evaluate are the occlusal vertical dimension, occlusal plane, lip support, midline, canine lines, and high lip line. Achieving the bite registration, a patient is placed into centric relation which is a repeatable condylar position, and bite registration material is flown in between the notches. This will all be sent to the laboratory for articulation. 